Hello again. One final lesson on attribute selection. You're probably getting a bit fed up with attribute selection by now, but you know it's really important. It's one of the things that can really improve the performance uh, of machine learning methods, and more importantly, it really improves the understandability. You know, you select out some attributes. It's easy to explain to other people you know, uh, what what you've done to get such good performance on their data set. So attribute selection is pretty important. And uh, we're going to look in this uh, lesson at a fast attribute selection using ranking. Uh, remember before in the last lesson we looked at attribute subset selection, which involves a subset evaluation measure and a search method. And we were looking for rapid subset evaluation methods. The wrapper method is very slow and we were looking for faster alternatives. But of course searching is slow. So uh, we're not going to do any searching now. We're going to use a single attribute evaluator that doesn't evaluate a subset, it evaluates each attribute individually. And this can help eliminate irrelevant attributes, but it can't reduce, remove redundant attributes because it's only looking at individual attributes one at a time. And uh, when you choose the ranking, you need to choose the ranking search method whenever you select a single attribute evaluator. The ranking search method doesn't really search, it just sorts them into rank order of the evaluation. Okay, so we've seen several metrics for evaluating attributes before. You know, we looked uh, in the last course at 1R ages ago, remember 1R? Um, it's effectively a, a method of uh, ranking attributes. Uh, so in Weka, there are attribute selection methods based on all of these, the 1R attribute evaluator. Uh, C4.5, what we know as J48 in Weka, uses information gain, so there's an information gain attribute evaluator. Uh, actually, it uses a gain ratio, slightly uh, more complex than information gain, and there's also a gain ratio attribute evaluator. Uh, and in the last lesson, we saw the CFS subset evaluation method, and that uses symmetric uncertainty. So there's a symmetric uncertainty attribute evaluator in Weka. The ranker search method is very simple. It just sorts attributes according to their evaluation. And you can specify the number of attributes to retain. The default is to retain them all. Or you can uh, ask it to discard attributes whose valuation uh, falls below a certain threshold. Or you can specify a certain set of attributes that you want to ignore. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's compare gain ratio attribute evaluation with the other methods we looked at in the last lesson on the ionosphere data. And the gray part of this, the no attribute selection and the CFS subset evaluation and the wrapper, those results we got before in the last lesson. So we're just gonna look at the gain ratio attribute evaluator. Uh, so I'm gonna go here to Weka. I've got my ionosphere data sets. I'm going to use, of course, I'm going to use the attribute selected classifier to get a fair evaluation. Get a attribute selected classifier. And then here I'm going to specify, uh, let's use, uh, we'll just use naive base to start off with. Here is naive base. And I'm going to use, what am I going to use? A gain ratio attribute evaluator. And if I just run that, it's not going to work. The attribute evaluators must use the ranker search method. So, sorry about that. I should have specified here the ranker search method. And there's a couple of parameters. So the number to select, minus one means select them all. It's not really very useful to select them all. I can select seven, the best seven attributes. We get our sets to ignore, and this threshold here, this <laughs> bizarre number, is actually uh, minus infinity in Java. So uh, that's why it's such a strange number. Uh, so that's all I need to do, and I'm going to run that, and I get 89, 90% accuracy. Okay, let's go back to the slide and compare this. So last time with Naive Base, I got 83% accuracy, and then 89% with CFS subset evaluation, 91% with the wrapper selection method, and uh, with this new method, gain ratio attribute evaluate, uh, evaluator, just a single attribute evaluator, I get 90% fantastic performance for a method that's lightning fast. 
For IBK, uh, the performance is not really very good. It's just the same as IBK without any attribute selection. And for J48, it's the same as a J48 without any attribute selection. So um, single attribute selection is lightning fast, but very sensitive to the number of attributes. I chose seven here because it turned out to be a good number for this problem. There's a lot of single attribute evaluators in Weka. Uh, we talked about the first four uh, a minute ago, and then there's a one based on the chi-squared test, one based on support vector machines, one instance-based evaluator, principal components transform, and the latent semantic analysis. And uh, the workings of these is, are all explained in the papers that are referenced in the More button for that uh, attribute evaluator. There are also meta evaluators which incorporate other operations. So that's it. We've seen that attribute subset selection involves searching, which is bound to be slow no matter how quickly you can evaluate the subsets. So instead, we can use single attribute evaluation. It involves ranking, which is really fast. Uh, it's hard to specify a suitable cutoff. You need to do experimentation. It doesn't cope with redundant attributes. So for example, if you have copies of an attribute, then they will be repeatedly selected because attributes are evaluated individually. And many single attribute evaluators are based on machine learning methods we've already looked at. The activity associated with this lesson is really worth doing because it gives you a really remarkable result. It uses this attribute selection method on a document classification system, and it gets stunningly good results with just two attributes. I was very surprised when I set up this uh, activity to see how well you could do using this method. So please go ahead and do that. You'll be surprised and impressed, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.